All right, today I'm going to talk about Bootstrap a little bit more. We covered it in class yesterday, but I feel like I went through some of the features pretty quickly, and uh, I wanted to give you a better idea of how I created the index file that you're going to be using as a template. Um, so at the Bootstrap site, getbootstrap.com, and on the Getting Started page, um, you can download all the Bootstrap files from here. Now you have that in the zip file that I gave you. It has the CSS, the fonts, the JavaScript, and the beginning of an HTML page. But if you're starting from scratch, you'll just get those folders and you won't get an HTML page. And to get that started, if you scroll down a little bit, they actually have a basic template for you to work with. So I'm going to take this code for the basic template, copy it, and put it in a text wrangler document that I already have started here. I've already saved it in the folder that I'm working on called index.html. So I'm gonna save that. And if we take a quick look at this uh, file, we see we have a head and a body, and in the head we have the title. So let's change the title to the title that we want our site to be. Maybe I want mine to be about Austin Music. And then we have links to the Bootstrap CSS, and this is the minified version. In your case, I have unminified your CSS, so it's easier for you to look at if you need to inspect it. Um, but it's okay for us to leave it like this right now. I'm going to go ahead and make a link to a second style sheet that doesn't exist yet, but we'll create it in a few minutes. That's the one that's our custom style sheet. And uh, that's already linked in the installation that I gave you. And then uh, don't worry about these comments here. These are things that are inserted in um, Bootstrap to handle some IE8 support. Uh, down in the body, we just have a hello world. And then at the bottom of the page, we have the links for the jQuery that is on the uh, Google site, and then we have our local JavaScript for Bootstrap uh, file linked here. So everything's set up in exactly where we need it to be, and everything needs to continue to have this relationship. So if we save this page, and we come over here, and we open the page, all we have, are, all we have is this hello world right now. And uh, we can go back to the Bootstrap site and scroll down a little bit further, and there are a bunch of examples here that are very helpful to get you started. So let's look at this starter template. It basically puts the navigation bar for you and then starts some content. So it's easy to look at the source of that. We just say um, view source when you do a control click on the page. And you can come down here and see what they did. So the first thing is navigation. Let's grab this navigation and put that in our site. And this has the Responsive navigation up here for when the page is collapsed to a smaller size, and then regular navigation here. So I'm going to put that in the body just above the hello world. So we'll save this, and we will look at our page now. And we have a nice navigation bar here. It's covering the hello world, and we'll take care of that in a second. But the navigation functions, and if we make it smaller, we can see that it turns into the collapsible kind for the um, responsive design. Now, of course, you have to go in here and you would put your project name and whatever your sections are going to be, and you need to do it in both places, the regular navigation and the collapsed navigation, um, but it gives you a good start. Another thing to notice about the navigation when you get here is that there's some classes. Uh, first of all, it's just a regular nav bar class that identifies that it's a navigation bar. The nav bar in verse makes it um, a black navigation bar. If we change that to nav bar default, it should reverse the colors and the style of your navigation. Uh, so you can decide which one you want to start with, or you can make changes to the code to um, make it any color that you want. It's also nav bar fixed top, which means when we scroll, the nav bar stays fixed. So it's not going to move. We don't have anything else on the page, but it's not going to move. Content is going to go below it. And um, that can be changed, and there are different ways that you can look at the different options. And all that is available on the Bootstrap site. So the second thing we want to get is maybe the first little bit of content here in this container. So I'll grab this whole container that has just basically the um, heading and uh, some paragraphs. And we'll put that below. We'll replace the Hello World. And we'll put that content below. So we'll save this again back to the browser, refresh. And now we have some content on the page. But you can see that this doesn't look exactly like this starter template here. We want it to look more like that. 
And so the culprit is they have already started some custom CSS here. If I go to the starter template.css, I can see that they have some padding at the top to push things down, um, some padding on that particular div itself, and they're aligning it to the center. And so those are all the problems that we're having. So I'm going to copy this and put this in a custom CSS. We're going to create that now. File new, and I'll pop it in there. And then I'm going to save this in the same folder where I'm working right now in the CSS and call it custom.css. We've already linked it in our HTML. And now when we go back to the page and refresh, we should have a bit of a different look. So now we have a little space, a little room. Things are starting to look more like a regular site. So if we go back to Bootstrap, there are a bunch of different themes here that help you get started, that help you see different kinds of features. This Bootstrap theme is really good because it has all these different buttons and the different examples of the tables we went over. It has an, uh, a thumbnail. We went over several other ways that you could handle images, labels, drop downs. Here are the different nav bars. So you can get ideas by going through these examples. And we'll talk about the carousel soon uh, as well. On, uh, the next one with the grids, I really like this one because it gives you a lot of different examples for how you can set up these um, rows that have the different levels of columns in them. So let's take a look at this and view the page source. And maybe we'll grab a new container that will have some of these rows and columns in them. So um, actually, we'll go ahead and put this in the regular overall container class but I will grab this one that says three equal columns. We'll get the H3 uh, that comes with it and the paragraph that describes it. We can change that to something later. And so it basically has div class equal row, and then it has these three columns that are each four units a piece. Remember, we're working with a 12 unit grid. So I'm gonna copy this. And let's put this somewhere in our HTML, maybe below the introductory stuff from the header document, but still within the container so that it's handled that way. And uh, I like to be really careful with my indenting when I'm working in Bootstrap because the, co the uh, content and the coding gets very complex. And so if you have things indented properly, you can see if you've opened or closed divs properly, um, you can see basically how to decode things if you're ending up having to troubleshoot something. Okay, so let's save this and then go back to our page and see what we have, see if we indeed have a three column layout. And we do, we have three equal columns. There's not much text in here, but we could go in here and change where it says the content here and put any kind of text that we want in here. Um, maybe I wanna talk about three different areas of my site. So within this div, to make it more meaningful for you to use, Maybe I want to say bands, and I want to say venues, and I want to say music sites. Maybe I have some favorite music publications or sites that I want to send people to. And uh, let's refresh that. So now we can kind of see that we've got content going across here, and that's how I want to introduce. Maybe these will correspond to different pages on my site, um, and there are different ways to handle that. So that basically takes care of getting access to the different kinds of content elements that are on the Bootstrap site. If you come back to this grid template, you can see some different examples for different sizes of columns, and you can add as many different rows as you want on that site and be able to control that information by assigning different classes to it or different IDs to it in your custom CSS. So you can do things like um, put borders around the columns if you want them to have borders around them, change the background color or something like that. Um, so this basically gets you started with Bootstrap. In the next video, I'll talk a little bit more about adding some different components to Bootstrap.